Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm once again answering some of your questions, such as, are there any brands that I've been put off because of who wears them? Such as, a lot of douches wear this brand, in my experience, would I not wear it? And what are those brands? And of course, are there any indie or micro brands on my radar at the moment? All that and way more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I have the H Moser Pioneer on the orange Moser strap back on my wrist. It's getting hot in Miami, so back with the rubber. And also, guys, a bunch of new watches have hit DelrayWatch.com, including this Grand Seiko High Beat GMT with the sapphire bezel, one of my very favorites. We also got in a ton of Nomos watches, uh, I believe seven of them in all different variations, and this very rare, one of 50, brand new, JLC Reverso Duo Face Turbion in Platinum for a huge discount from its MSRP. Cheapest one in the entire world, by far, well, not that there's many for sale, I think there's only two for sale in the entire world, and I am cheapest by far. What a killer watch this is, and you can check it out at delraywatch.com, the best place for a watch geek to buy a watch. Link in the description below. Anyway, guys, these are the questions you asked me. You know the spiel on my Instagram account at Federico Talks Watches. Q&A picture goes up once in a while. When I have enough questions, I take the picture down. Please do not DM me. I do not check them. And in no particular order, we start with Philip Ferrado. And he says, hey, Federico, I'm considering a vintage steel Rolex Oyster Quartz. I love the look. Plus, it's got a place in horological history. What are your thoughts? Well, I love the look too. And it definitely has a place in horological history. And even though it's a quartz watch, it's made to a super high standard. And you can still pick them up fairly reasonably. I'm a big fan of the Oyster Quartz. Where you need to be careful is servicing. Parts are scarce, very few watchmakers will work on them. I think Rolex, in most cases, won't work on them. So while you can pick one up for a fairly good price, it's essential to pick one up in great condition and great working order, because servicing, while not impossible, can certainly be a pain in the butt. 10X Sean, a good friend of mine, asks... Which indie or micro brand currently has your attention? Well, a lot of you guys know I'm not a big micro brand kind of guy. As far as indie, you know, Moser, love Moser, love FP Journ, a few others. But as far as micro brands, the only one that's had my attention for a little while now is Sartori Billard. I just love what they make. I love the look of their watches. I love their dials. They just built a manufacturing facility. They're going from zero to 100 real quick and with the quality to back it up. While I don't own one, I certainly do plan on it at some point in the future. Hanlon84, good afternoon, Fed. Have you ever been put off by a watch or a brand because you've seen a douchebag or multiple douchebags wearing them? This is a great question, and I'm gonna try and answer it as honestly as possible. While I like to think I'm my own person and I can make my own decisions, in fact, I wear a lot of quirky things, you know, perception still sometimes affects me and it affects a lot of people, even though they don't necessarily admit it. And I have been put off in the past, um, not necessarily for douchebags, but, but for multiple reasons, including douchebaggery. Uh, one great example is Rolex. Um, I used to really like Rolex. And of course there's other factors to why I no longer wear them, including the fact that they're the worst bang per buck horologically speaking, watch brand out there, but they became too common. And then with them being too common and me living in Miami, they're also worn by a load of douchebags. I don't necessarily like what having a Rolex on my wrist portrays to the outside world. And while naturally, you know, normally I don't really care what I portray, it is definitely a small factor if I'm being honest and I certainly don't like it. Then there's another brand, Hublot. I actually don't necessarily hate a lot of their designs. 
very unpopular opinion. Uh, and their new watches, while their designs are very ugly, do have their in-house movements. Hublot was a brand of no substance for a long time, and now they're a brand with more substance than before. Are they the king of watchmaking? Absolutely not. Would I wear one? Probably no, still no. But also, if you look at who wears Hublot, uh, I mean, uh, once again, this is my portrayal, right? I, I live in Miami. I just don't want to be the guy with his shirt unbuttoned to here with like a 200 gram, you know, Cuban link chain made in like seven carat gold who's out there like hollering at girls like out the window of his 1998 Land Rover. It's just not my thing, right? So... Yes, it does definitely have a douchebaggery, definitely has an effect uh, of me being put off a brand. And once again, I'm trying to be as honest as possible, but it's not really a big thing for me. I tend to wear what I like, but I would be lying to you if I said, you know, uh, I haven't been put off in the past. Josh Natal 73 says, Hey Fed, how's the 911 Targa? And is it still well complemented with fine wrist pieces? In other words, does a 911 and a Submariner go well together? Yes, a 911 and a Submariner go very well together. Uh, however, not the most inspiring combination. We have pretty much the most common sports car, which yes, I own, and the most common luxury watch. It's almost like a uniform together. The Submariner is the 911 of you know, like in the 911 in the car world, they're, they're very, very equivalent. So while not the most, most interesting combination, yes, they certainly do work. I'm not a massive car expert. I'm a car enthusiast. I'm perfectly happy with my 911, but I prefer to wear it or pair it with a Moser or Breguet or GP. However, that is just me. Murat A100, how do you handle the Miami heat? as in the temperature, not the basketball team. I'm thinking about watch straps in particular. Only thing that works for me is loose bracelets and loose rubber straps. Well, this is a great question. Heat is a big factor in Miami. However, not always as big a factor as you think. There's a lot of air conditioning in Miami and it's not really a city where you walk around a lot. So a lot of times I go to my car in air conditioning, I get out of my car, I'm in the heat for 30 seconds and I'm into the office or I'm into the car and into a restaurant, or I'm into the car and into whatever else I'm doing. Very rarely, in summer especially, do we spend a lot of time outdoors. Now, yes, if I'm by the pool, if I'm at the beach or dining outdoors, I tend to stick with rubber straps. And yeah, I, I do wear them a little on the looser side. Uh, bracelets are also good, but only if they have micro adjustments. I pretty much won't wear a leather strap unless it's a formal occasion until I say the beginning of October, pretty much, but not much you can do. But if you really think about it, at least my lifestyle, I don't spend a whole time, a whole ton of time in the heat. So I guess I'm okay with it. Redondo Dom, being a car guy, how do you feel about Chopard watches? specifically the Mila Mia. I love Chopard watches, specifically the LUC, but you're not asking about LUC, you're asking about Mila Mia. So what do I think? Overall, big and bold. I actually like the way they look. Previously, a lot of Eta movements. Now they have their in-house. I think for a pre-owned watch, if you buy it pre-owned, you can get them for a big, big discount. It can be a very cool accessory. It could be a very handsome and bold watch and a great way to express your automotive enthusiasm. However, you know, not necessarily the Chopard I would pick unless it's a killer price. I would tend to stick with the LUC. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Please give this video two thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.